so good evening, everyone. Thanks for being here. I, I truly, truly appreciate it. Um, you know, when you do a class like this, a longer term class, I know longer term really isn't the sexiest thing in the world to talk about. And I, I'm going to spend a couple of minutes. I'm going to talk about a couple of trades that, you know, really did well for me. And I might talk about a, a few others that really did well. But I don't want tonight to be about a trade that is in the past, essentially, or something that um, you guys can't participate in. So what I want to do is I want to talk about the things that you can do and how you might want to think about doing some longer term positions to really improve your trading and not just with options, but with stocks on both sides. Does that sound, sound OK to you guys? So first off, what I'm going to do is I want to talk about a trade in space and in this trade in space, I don't want anyone to get into this. How many of you guys have ever been to a webinar where they just pump and pump and pump and talk about this gain that they had in a trade and, um, and never really get around to showing you how you can participate in that or do something with it? OK, I'm only as good as my next trade. Right. And I'm going to show you in this trade um, just some of the details um, of this trade and just let you know, guys, that this is an extraordinary trade. This doesn't happen very often. OK, um, now you can make extraordinary con returns with long term trades, but this this one is a little bit of an oddity. OK, in the way this one worked out. Now, first off, um, everyone in right way options knows that we bought. I bought a long term position in space. OK, I bought a January 2022 contract and I did that somewhere over here in November of last year. OK, I sold calls against that trade several times, picked up some nice premium. And then the stock pulled back and kind of wandered around here. And then it just took off like it was fueled by a rocket. OK, rocket fuel. OK, and let me show you. I clipped these images directly from my brokerage account. Whoops, not that one. Well, that one you can see that's a carving I did. I was just trying to blow this one up. <clears throat> that was an actual return at one point in time on this trade. Um, 4,400%. Now that's just kind of even that's stupid to say, right? How do you make a 4,000% return? Well, let me explain this trade for just a little bit. When I first bought this position, okay. Uh, whoops, that's not what I want. Oh, just a second. I got to... I closed down the wrong think or swim. I had all the details up and I ended up accidentally closing it. Um, so let me give you the details of the trade. I bought the January 2022 leap options in November of last year. And um, the actual payment that I paid for those positions um, in space, I'm looking at it right now off my brokerage sheet. I paid $8.85 a share on that trade. So I paid $8.85. Um, and this is for the uh, 20 strike calls. Okay. So I paid $8.85 for the trade. Well, just today, if you go into the space position, you'll see that the January 22 calls are priced at $17.60 a share. Okay. I'd like to know it was right. It was right over here in November. Here's my pattern. There's that nice little pullback. Right in here, right in here is about where we entered that trade. 
Now, everyone in RWO had the opportunity to take this trade because I reported it to everyone, okay, in the position. And um, I, <clears throat> after it rallied, I sold some calls. I collected full premium on those calls. It rallied some more. I sold some more calls. And honestly, guys, by the time I moved over into here, into this area, I was almost in a free trade. Now, what that means is in the short calls that I had sold, I had recovered my 885. Almost recovered my 885. Okay. The stock surged. Boom. Went up like a rocket shot. Okay. No, it was in the money. Um, I, I never buy at the money options, John. Um, ever. I'm always somewhere between 70 and 80 deltas. Okay. Um, never do I buy at the money options. All right. So over in this area, I was already essentially in a free trade because I've re I'd recovered on my short call options everything I'd paid to enter this position. And I've got 10 contracts, okay? Not that that matters to anyone. 10, 20 strike contracts. Well, the stock just went bananas here, okay? And it wasn't that long ago, okay? The stock rallied up big. We were up into this area, all right? And I sold, I sold the 60 strike calls against this trade, okay? I was literally hoping I would get called away at 60. So actually I'm a little bit higher over here someplace. Sold those 60 strike calls. I sold those calls for $13 a share, okay? The stock went up there a couple times and looked like it was gonna call me away. Yes, even leaps, John, even leaps. But it never did, okay? These deteriorated pretty quickly. Boom, Reter deteriorated pretty quickly. And I closed these out at less than $4, okay? I bought them back at four bucks. So right there, I just paid for the trade again, right? I was only in at 885 and I essentially paid for the trade again, just in those short calls. And then I immediately sold another set of short calls. And those are the calls, whoops. Those are the calls that um, have just recently gone basically to zero. Doggone it, I keep clicking on the wrong one. Um, those short calls, to give you the exact numbers because I've still got that on here. I sold the March 9th or 21, the March contracts, 60 strike calls for $8.20. As of right now, they're worth 16 and a half cents. So I have once again, paid for my overall cost in the position. I've paid for my overall cost in the, in the position several times over just by selling short calls against it. Okay, enough said, I made a lot of money on this. Okay, um, and at this point, I could hold this I could hold this if, if space goes back to zero because I have no, my cost basis on this trade is way below zero. Like $18 below zero. Okay. If I sold calls against it and it, continued up, I would have been called away, Val. If it goes above 60 and someone executes those contracts, 
they take the stock at $60 a share. And believe me, I was more than willing to let it go. Okay. Uh, Dick, whenever I sell calls out of the money, I'm always looking at selling calls somewhere around 30 deltas out of the money. Okay. Options that have about a 70% chance of expiring worthless. Okay. So I, well, I'll tell you this. I made more money on this trade than a lot of people make all year. One trade, a lot of people make all year trading. One trade. Okay, so if that's not enough to convince you that long-term holding is worth doing, let me show you another trade. This is NGE. I'm actually going to switch this to, um, well, let's just leave it here. In looking at GE, this is a pattern that I like to trade all the time. And I'm going to show you some of these patterns tonight that I think are important. First off, the stock breaks a downtrend. And then we hold a higher low. Okay. We prove that we can hold this support. Okay. So I went long GE. Now, what I did here is I just bought the stock. Okay, you don't have to buy the options. The reason I bought the stock is look at the price. Okay, what's the point of using leverage on something that's that cheap? I just bought the stock. Okay, now the other day when we had that big market run up, right over here, I was up so much in trades, I felt the need to take some profits. I'm kind of regretting that at the moment that I sold GE, okay? But I can always buy it back, okay? But I went ahead and sold that trade. Now, this trade um, returned over 64% return, okay? And the stock position that I was in, it was over $5,500. Okay, more than that. On one trade. And I didn't do anything else to it. When the, when the stock settled down a little bit, I sold some calls against it, that kind of thing. But I really didn't do anything else to it. Okay. <clears throat> um, what's to feel bad about, JB? I'm in a free trade. I have 10 calls with um, on space with 325 days left in them. And my cost basis on these trades is like $17 below zero. Why would I feel bad? Okay, I don't know what's going to, going to happen to space from here, but it doesn't really matter. I've made tons of money on this trade already. If I hold the position, I have the opportunity to make a lot more. Does that make sense? Now, let me talk about this concept, okay, in looking at longer term trades. Now, typically when I look at longer term trades, Okay, and, and by the way, guys, this isn't this isn't odd for me. Um, I'm holding Walmart. Everyone knows this. I talk about this trade all the time. This is my entry into Walmart. Okay, right there. It's that same pattern that I just displayed. Break the downtrend, hold the higher low, hold that downtrend as support. I bought the trade. As a matter of fact, I think Rick would attest that I was telling everybody about this at that time that I was buying Walmart and I thought everybody should be buying some Walmart. Okay, anybody that would listen to me, I was talking about it. Thank you, Scott. At this point in time on this trade, I have a profit in this position, unrealized gain of more than 75,000. Okay.
Make sense? And guys, this really isn't that hard to do. Okay, what's hard to do is having the patience in the trade. And if you guys are, are with me in right way options, or if you've heard anything about this recently, um, the right way options group, we bought Altria. We bought Altria with the same basic pattern in mind. Rally up, trying to break the long-term downtrend. We went into this trade on Altria. Okay. And you can see the results so far. Now at this point in time, I have sold the 47 and a half strikes against this trade. I have it two ways. See, I have this in a, um, a smaller account, okay? I have it in a smaller account where I own the options. I bought the January 2022 40 strike options. Okay. And then I have it in my long term hold account. Okay. I have it as just a stock trade. All right. Now, currently, just a second, I got to find it here. At the close of the day, it was a little bit better earlier today. The stock position is currently up uh, $1,520 since our entry over here. that sound good to anybody? And all we did was look at a, a simple price pattern that repeats itself over and over in a chart. And when the stock runs excessively or moves up substantially in a trade, that's usually when I sell out of money calls against it and I start lowering my cost basis on the position. Okay, now when I'm doing long-term trades, let me explain that for a second. If, if, I have, if I have a position that I pay $7 a share for, um, for an option or for the stock, okay, whatever it is, and if I can sell calls against it and collect 50 cents on that trade, and these expire worthless, what's my cost basis on this trade now? Exactly, $6.50. And if I'm holding this as a long-term position, can I keep doing this over and over and over and over and over? Yes. Okay, now we have a, a member in Right Way Options. I don't know if Goodson's here tonight. I'm gonna pick on him for just a second, but Goodson learned this, this strategy and he's making tremendous money with this strategy, selling calls against his position, bringing in additional premium into that position. Now think about that. If I can continue to lower the cost basis on my trade, is it going to be pretty easy for me to hold a position even if it rests or pulls back? Yeah it's quite easy to hold it because my cost in this trade is going down and I'm continuing to bring money in, okay? A lot of people think when you get into a long-term hold, if you just buy long terms without the use of options, it's true, you just have to wait and wait and wait before you bring in money. But literally, I can bring in money almost all the time by utilizing options by selling call options against either an, a long-term option trade or a stock position. And I can continuously bring in premium into that trade, continuing to reduce my cost basis on a position. Goodson has a position or had a position where he was essentially negative. 
in the trade, just like I did with space, okay? His trade was below his cost to get in the trade. All the, every, all the shares he owned, he owned them at a negative price. That's a pretty comfortable place to be in, right? You don't owe anything. I mean, you've paid off the entire position. Okay, so you're bringing in that money. Now, if you utilize a stock like this, now I bought this in my major account. I have a thousand shares of this trade. Okay, in my long-term account. This trade pays a 7.72% annualized dividend yield. How many of you last year had a tough time making a 7.72% in your overall account? This is going to pay me 7.72%. So if I can figure out a way to continue to manage this to avoid major risk in the trade and keep bringing in profits into my account, isn't that kind of handy to just have something that just keeps paying and keeps growing my account? So one thing that I do is I'm always working to decrease my cost basis into the trade. My cost starts at one point, and then I'm looking to bring it back, bring it down, bring it down, bring it down as systematically as I can. Now, the other thing I do that I think is kind of fun, okay, when you make a significant amount of money doing this, think about this, guys. My cost basis on space is like $17, $18 below zero. Do you think when space finishes its pullback and starts to show me a bullish pattern again, could I take some of that money and roll it in and buy a bigger position in space? with somebody else's money. Well, it's mine now, but you know what I'm saying? It's earned money. I can now add to the trade. I'm making enough premium in here over a period of time that I can buy more shares or additional contracts on this trade once this sets up the next entry point in the trade. And I can keep growing that position for as long as I can hold it. Now, I don't know how long a trend will go. And I'm talking about some trades that I've held for a long time. Let me show you one in uh, Disney. I've talked about this one quite a bit. Whoops, DIS. Let me go to my drawings over here. There was my entry into Disney. This trade went for four years. Now, does it matter, guys, if you, uh, this is one thing that people get hung up on. Yeah, but I have to tie up so much money in that trade to do this. I'm not sure I can tie up that much money for that period of time. Well, when you trade stock, guys, is there any rule that you have to buy 100 shares? No. You can buy five shares. You can buy one share if you want, right? You don't have to buy a great big position in that trade. And the thing is, guys, you never know which one is gonna do this. I buy a lot of positions that work out for a little bit of time, don't turn out to be long-term trades. You never know which stock is going to take off and hold that nice consistent trend for a long period of time. Okay, so let me show you something here. And this is something that I did with the Right Way Options group. Okay, I did this in front of, what we did is we took an entire two hours. In April of 2020, and I said, guys, I think the market is shaken out enough here. It might be time to start thinking about some longer term trades. And we talked about that for a couple of days and I thought, let's just get with the program here. And I wanted to show people or go through this exercise to show people how important it was, at least for me, 
to hold some longer term positions. Okay, so I said, how many of you, how many listening right now have capital that's just setting, doing nothing? Because you're never comfortable in short term trades to put all your money in the market, right? How many of you would say that most of the time you have 50% or more of your money sitting on the sidelines, not doing anything? Right? So what I suggested to everyone is what if we took a small portion? Took a small portion and allocated to longer term trading. Okay? So we just did this spreadsheet. We took $10,000 and set it aside. And on 420, 4120, we went through as a group, okay, not just me. We went through as a group and I said, let's see if we can find 10 positions and we chose to go with ETFs so that they were diversified, okay? We chose to go with ETFs and one of the person people in the room, we would check an ETF and they would check the dividend return and we went back and forth on it for two hours. When it was all said and done, we set allocations like this. And since that day, this has not changed. I've not changed a single thing to this position. The profits in this trade, we put $8,700 to work and left $1,300 in cash. And the other day when I figured the balance in here, we were up $5,600 on $8,700 invested in less than a year. And we didn't have to use big positions. Now, the reason this is showing 4.92, there's a rounding error um, in my sheet here, but I chose not to fix it because I didn't want anybody thinking that I had manipulated this at all. And every every so often we go back in and in, I do this in front of our all everybody in RWO and we recalculate and figure out where we are in that position. Now, let me ask you this, guys. How many of you in your fast swing trading have ever turned in that kind of a return in your account? Not only that, turned in that kind of a return and didn't do anything other but make one purchase. I haven't done anything else to this account. I haven't added in the dividends. I haven't done anything. This is actually worth more than this because we've been paid dividends every quarter on these ETFs. Okay, now the reason I did that is not to impress you or to not to say, woohoo, you're the greatest trader in the world. I think that's all hogwash. The reason I did this is to show you there's value in holding some longer term positions. One of the fallacies in the current market is all of the hype that's generated that we got to trade fast. We have to trade really, really fast if we're going to make money in this market. Would you guys agree the market is pretty darn volatile? Okay, particularly the last year or two, it's been extremely volatile. Hey, well, let me show you something. What I'm going to do, I'm actually going to go to my 3.8 trap chart. And I'm actually going to take price all the way off. I'm going to remove all of the lines and just leave. In fact, I'm even going to remove the, close the um, trendinator. I'm going to go to the Dow and look at a weekly chart. Anybody think you can make money with that chart? How about this chart? Can you make money with that chart? Can you make money with that chart?
In fact, I could go through charts over and over and over. Can you make money with that? Can you make money with that? 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 Over and over and over and over and over again, there's these trends around us. Okay? Trends that can turn into this. This, by the way, guys, was one of the longest term holds that I've ever had. I purchased it right here in 2013. My exit was over here. About $80 a share, and I was out in the 220s. Is it hard to follow that trend, guys? Okay. Now, there, the hype in the market nowadays tells us that we've got to trade fast. And think about why that continues to get propagated. Okay. All this is is a three and an eight exponential moving average. That's it. I mean, take those off and just put on a 17 exponential moving average. Okay, do we need to have all of those moving averages on there? Can we just do this and put on one moving average and see the trend? I mean, honestly, guys, this isn't, this isn't rocket science. Okay, but what the market has tried to teach us is that the really big money is in the quick trading, right? Isn't that your perception that we got to be fast traders to make lots of money in the market? But the truth is, guys, the folks that do position trading this longer term, not, not buy and hold forever, but longer term, blow away the short term traders day after day after day. They just smoke the, smoke the returns of the quick day trading, the quick trading. Now, don't get me wrong, I love to swing trade. And I love the profits I can make with swing trading. And here's the cool thing about this, guys, you don't have to do anything different, okay? You don't have to change up all of your patterns or signals. You guys saw what I had up there on the chart, right? I had the 3-8 trap strategy, okay? Here's the 3.8. By the way, I usually dim those down. I don't like them so bright. I like to see price more than the indicators. Okay. I'm going to go back to Walmart. And I'm going to put my entry on there. Is there anything different about that strategy than what I show people every single day with the 3-8 trap. It's the exact same trade. I just use a longer term chart. Now let's look at this just a little bit closer for a second. I'm gonna put the price back on here. Was it all that difficult to see the entry signal into that trade? Did anybody see that? And I mean anybody. Isn't that easier and a way easier chart to read? Now I want you to look at something here. Do you have to hold this for the length of time I've held it? Absolutely not. But how many of you guys have been able to hold a trade? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We had a little tiny black doji. Eight, nine, 10, 11 weeks before we had 
any kind of a major pullback. How much money would you make if you just went long a three month contract right there or a four month contract right there? You don't have to hold forever. What about setting your stop losses, Jim? You do the same thing. It's the same pattern. Where's the support of that trade? Right underneath that pattern, stop loss goes in here. Price action dictates the same thing we do on every daily trade. Okay, let me tell you how I manage this trade. Do you, if you take a long-term position, can you never take profits? <laughs> it's not true. <laughs> I bought Walmart here. And would you guys agree 11 weeks up like that is pretty extraordinary? How many times do you see something that goes 11 weeks and almost barely pulls back? Okay. So what I did is I kept tightening my stop in this trade and I sold 50% of the position here. Took half the profit off. On the rest of that position, I sold out of the money calls against the trade. And I continued to bring in premium month after month while that stock went sideways. Now I could have entered here, you guys can see that I have basically a 3-8 trap set up here, but I didn't re-enter there. What I did do is notice this pattern over here and I set an alert right across this area. When that occurred, guys, I bought my 50% back. Okay, remember, I've made some money on the short calls. I bought my 50% back and then I added call options to this trade because I utilized the capital from here to help fund those call options. Okay. I'm doing exactly the same thing as I always do in my swing trades. The only difference is because I'm looking at the longer term chart, I have the ability to hold and wait just a little bit longer in the trade. Uh, no, um, particularly on weekly charts, the question um, that I'm looking at is, <clears throat> do you reset your stop losses every day? Nope. Particularly when I get in a really good profit on the trade, I'll tell you honestly, guys, sometimes on my long-term account, if I look at, look at it once a day, that's kind of remarkable. Most of the time, it's every two or three days I'm, I'm even looking at it. Because once I have a good solid profit in the trade, I can relax. Okay, because I have plenty of room in that trade to let that stock move around and maintain its trend. Okay. Now, what you're seeing in these charts, and Harry's asking a question, how do I maintain my composure? Harry, how hard is it to maintain your composure when you catch a position and you get several weeks of upside? Isn't that way different than those daily swings and big gaps and stuff that you're seeing in charts? Do you see any gaps or anything hard in there to manage? No. If we take a look at the current trade in Mo, is there anything hard about that trade to manage? It's dead solid simple. Seriously, after the stock has rallied significantly or moved up where I think we've got a resistance or things that may um, throw a little monkey wrench into the trade, I just sell calls against it to control the risk of the position. That's, that's all. Let's take a look at, I wanna show you guys a trade that could be setting up right now. As a matter of fact, I bought a starter position in this. Take a look at 3M. Do you guys see the exact same pattern that I just showed you on Walmart? 
I don't have a strong buy signal yet. But do you guys see the pattern setting up right here? A nice, old, boring company paying a great dividend yield. And you don't have to buy a giant position in here. Now, one of the things is, as an option trader, people get all worked up because, well, wait a minute, I'm an option trader, I don't trade stock. Honestly, guys, does it matter if you buy 10 shares of this? When you buy an option position, you have to have 100 shares, but do you have to do that with a stock? No, and the return is the same, whether it's just a few shares or not, a, you know, whatever. And you can turn these trades into incredible profits. One of the concepts I use here is reversion to the mean. Have you guys ever heard of reversion to the mean? When a stock is up here and sells off to here, I'm not looking for this. In fact, I have no illusions that this is going to just come all the way back up there to that price level. None whatsoever. But I do know there's a high possibility that it's going to come back halfway. Does anyone mind buying something here at 177 and taking it 30 points higher? Okay. Yes, you can average in. You can continue to buy as the stock moves up. Okay. Mel, yes, if you're going to sell calls against it, you need to have 100 shares in the position. Okay, but do you have to just sell naked or sell sell the covered call position? If you had 10 shares, let me show you a trade. My good buddy Mike Peterson bet me. Oops, that's a weekly chart. Yeah. Back over here, someplace over here. I was I was doing a class and I was talking about everybody needs a smartphone and stuff like that and he said okay pal smarty pants he had just lost some money on UAA he said I'll tell you what I'll buy a smart phone if you buy 10 shares of UAA and hold it till it doubles I said okay deal I don't think he expected me to take the deal I'm still holding those 10 shares from this period of time over here when I bought that position, actually I think it was over in here. I'm back green on this those 10 shares over that period of time. But I've traded around those 10 shares by adding calls to it, buying puts, using bear call credit spreads, bull put credit spreads. And as of today, guys, those 10 shares in the trading around that position from this time over here, 10 shares, I'm up over 7K. Okay. Anybody have a problem with that? Only Mike Peterson, yeah. <laughs> he likes to say I took advantage of a senior citizen. Um, <laughs> Vitaly, I just said, you got 10 shares. I can't sell a contract without having a naked position out there, but I can do a bear call credit spread, can't I? And I can do a bull put credit spread, can't I? And continue to bring premium into the trade. Okay. And when I get good buy signals, can I just buy calls, long calls to enhance the trade? 
And when I get good sell signals, can I just buy straight puts to enhance the trade? And buy calls to enhance the trade? Okay. So you don't have to hold the giant position in this. Let me remind you guys just one more time. We don't have anywhere near 100 shares in any of these positions. Since 4-1-2020, in those few positions, $8,700, we've got a 64.41% return. And we didn't do any call selling around it. We didn't do anything. And that doesn't even include the dividends. Okay. Question is, how does that relate? 10 shares, how does that relate to doing option spreads? Well, think about it, Lee. If you're holding, if you're holding this position, are you going to be paying attention to this stock? If you're holding one share of the position, are you going to pay attention to that stock price? Yes. And if you're paying attention to the stock price, should you be able to identify? The buy signals, the places where you could do bull put credit spreads underneath that rally, bear call credit spreads above that high point. Can't you trade around the stock position? Isn't that what a covered call is? We're trading around the position because we're paying attention to the stock. Uh, Kevin, yes, you can do that. If you only want to hold one month, you might want to shorten up the time frame because these are weekly charts. You know, maybe if you took a um, a two or a three day chart, can you can you find entry signals on a three day chart and 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 do a month or two month trade? You don't have to do long-term holds, right? Um, there was a trade I intended to be a long-term trade in Home Depot. Get my drawings back on. Right over here. I intended this to be a long-term trade. Clearly this trade, let me see. Cool, there it is. Can't see it. Clearly this trade didn't work out like I expected it to. My entry was over here into that trade. There's my entry in here. Ah, give me a tool, my drawing tools. Over here was my entry. How many weeks did that go up without a black candle? I did this trade right in front of everybody in RWO. And in this trade, I made 10K. Okay, now let me ask you guys a question. When you look at this chart, is it easier to see the price patterns on this longer term chart, whether it be a weekly chart or a three day chart? Is it easier to read the price action? It's a lot easier to read the price action. Okay, there's a few difficulties you have to get used to. If you're a short term trader, it's really, really difficult to develop the discipline. <laughs> well, it's di difficult to develop the discipline, even in swing trading, to stop mucking around with the trade, right? To let the trade work. Would you guys agree? Even on the swing trade, we've got to develop the discipline to stop micromanaging and leave the stupid thing alone, right? It's even harder when you do long-term positions.
Okay, you have to let the trade work. Okay. So you have to become patient with the trade. Now I will tell you the entry is always the hardest part. That first move in the trade is always the hardest part. Imagine, let's pull this back over here a little bit. We see a ni nice potential entry over here. And we pick up an entry into this chart right here. Okay, and this is what this is what messes up people all the time. The stock rallies. The pressure on that trade starts to build because we have that short term mentality in mind. I've got to close this trade. But do you really have to close this trade? You don't. There's no law out there that says I have to close this position. It's your own personal pressure that you've applied to the trade that's creating that problem. So one of the things that I do to resolve that issue is I sell, once we move up in the position, I sell out of the money calls. If I'm expecting a pullback, one of my rules, guys, that I trade by, any stock that's moved up five to seven periods in a row, moved in one direction, five to seven periods in a row, I am expecting a pullback. How many days do we have here? Weeks, one, two, three, four, five. I'm expecting a pullback. So I sell out of the money calls. I bring in some additional premium. That allows me to hold this trade because I'm making money on these short-term calls. I'm losing money on the long-term position because we're pulling back, okay? I only move my stop loss from here once that higher low has been established. Now think about it, guys. If you can hold through this and get over here, does this trade get a lot easier after that point? Because now my stop loss is in and I'm locked into a profit. Okay. I'm locked into a profit and every subsequent move after this gets easier and easier. Because after I wait for those rally days, one, two, three, four, five, six, I'm expecting a pullback. Sell out of the money calls. Let the trade do what it naturally does. This peak and valley pattern is the most common pattern in the market. Okay? And if we can ride this wave, we don't know how far this will go. Okay. How many short calls do I sell? I usually sell enough short calls to cover the entire position. So if I have, let's say I buy this with just a one contract trade. I do one contract trade on this. Once this moves up here, I sell an out of the money call, one contract. Okay, if this is 100 shares, this moves up, I sell one contract. If it's 1,000 shares, I sell 10 contracts. Does that make sense? Okay, all I'm doing is covering or hedging the position. By the way, guys, that's why options were created. Options were created for the purposes of hedging, not for speculation. Options have turned into, would you guys say that the option market nowadays is a little bit like a casino? Lots of bells and whistles going off, lots of excitement, yay, people cheering over here and there. It's essentially a casino anymore. That's not why options were created. They were created for the purposes of hedging. Two guys won the Nobel Prize because it gave institutions the ability to hedge these giant positions. 
that they had in the market. Changed everything. Okay. But most people don't use options as they were intended. I'm just utilizing them as they were intended to lower the cost on my trade, to hedge, hedge my trade when I'm in the position, and to bring in additional capital consistently on my trades. Now I mentioned over here that this position that I picked up in Mo, and I can't tell you guys if Mo is going to work out. I cannot tell you that this is just going to go for the next two years to the upside. I don't know if it'll finish up next week. I don't know. But what I can tell you is I'm making really good money on this. And if I can hold this position, if I can figure out a way to manage and hold this position, imagine right here, if this just now rests in here, moves over to trend and continues to move up. Pretty simple at that point, right? Just take my stop loss, move it up to here. These will have expired. I'll have made full profit on those trades. Let this move on up and then sell another out of the money call or out of the money calls against that trade above the next resistance level or above the next point that I think makes sense where I can collect a nice premium on the trade and just keep doing it. Okay. Hey y'all, um, good, good tag along to come in. Hey y'all, um, why would I not sell at the money? Think about it. If I want to hold this longer term, if I sell at the money, I run a 50-50 chance of getting called away on the trade. Is that what I want? Do I want to be called away on the trade? I don't. I don't want to be called away on the trade. Okay, so selling at the money pretty much guarantees that I'm going to get a lot of callaways. Now, if that's your goal, that's fine. Okay, that's not what I want. I want to be able to hold this position. Okay. I want to be able to hold this position. Now, there's a couple other questions. Maybe I've missed them that I need to address here. So let me get to that, guys. Um, do I hold the longer? Do I check the fundamentals? Rarely. Rarely do I check the fundamentals. Because typically when I'm doing longer term holds, I'm looking at these big old boring companies. Okay. I'm looking for those places where I can get those dividend yields, where I can get that nice return on the trade. So typically, no. I want that good old solid company, and I pretty much know it's a good old solid company. Which means I'm not buying long-term positions in NIO or something like that, that, that you know, just kind of... It's, it's a good chart. It's a good swing trade chart. It's not a good long-term hold. Right? Would you guys agree with that? It's like space. Space really isn't a good long-term hold. It's a great stock to sell calls against. It's not necessarily a good long-term hold because it's too volatile. It's too nutty. The stock has never made it. The company's never made any money. Okay. I don't. Um, Glenn, I don't have a specific target. Now, the reason I don't have a specific target, you know, for, like, for example, with Mo, I have this idea or this notion that we could have a reversion to the mean, just come somewhere back up here into the middle. Okay, that's all I'm, that's all I'm really concerned about. Oftentimes, though, you'll find that trade and it just keeps going. You don't know which one it's going to be. That'll just keep going to the upside. And by the way, guys, this is pretty common stuff. Look at this. Stocks go through these protracted, nasty little pullbacks. 
they turn around and then look at this. How many years did that go up? Okay, now it doesn't matter if you hold a whole bunch of shares or if you hold 10 shares, you still made a tremendous return on that trade, right? And it's easy to manage. You don't have to be messing with it every single day. And the farther and farther it goes, the easier it gets to manage. Okay, now one of the questions I have to address here before we've already been here an hour, and this is really important is, and somebody may have asked it, but I've missed it, what do you do, what do I do when I, I'm facing earnings? You guys ever thought about that? What am I going to do when I face an earnings report on this? Well, one of the first things I do when I have to face an earnings report is I wait right up almost to the point of the earnings announcement. No, I don't cross my fingers. Okay. Would you guys agree I'm up nicely in this trade? I've got $1,500 profits in this position already in this trade. So if earnings were tomorrow, what I would do is I would close my short strike. I would close those out of the money calls, take my profit on those, whatever it is, and close that down. Because my hope is on an earnings event, obviously I'm holding this trade, my hope is this thing's gonna go to the moon on the earnings report, just pop clear up there. Now that's not likely, but stocks can make big moves on earnings reports, right? So I don't wanna cap my upside potential on that trade. Don't wanna cap my upside potential. So I wanna close those short calls. And then I'm gonna go buy some puts. Okay, I can buy a put. I can come over here, buy a put that says, um, for, maybe I buy a 40 put or 42 put or something like that, 42 puts on this, and I lock in my stop loss. Because remember, what is a put? If I own this position, either with stock or options, the put gives me the right to sell that position at the price I buy those puts at. Yes, I buy an equal number of puts to cover the shares that I own, okay? Now, if the earnings report comes out good and the stock moves up, stock moves up. If I sell an out of the money put, let's say the out of the money, or buy the out of the money put, has 30 deltas on it, okay? And I own 100 shares of the stock, has 100 deltas on it and the stock moves up, am I still going to make money on that day? Yes. I'm still going to make money on that day. So what I'm going to do is after the event is known, if the stock moves in my direction, I'm going to come over here, close this position, and I'm going to take a small loss. Okay, it's just like buying insurance on your car or on your house. I took a little bit of my profit, I bought some insurance, protected the trade for the short term, closed that trade for a small loss. Now, if that stock moves really nicely to the upside, if it pops nicely up here, as soon as I sell this call option or these put options, I'm usually going to go out in the market and sell some out of the money calls, 30 deltas out of the money. Okay? Because after a big pop like that, what normally occurs? The stock rests and pulls back. And I make money on these.
Does that make sense, guys? Uh, Phil, when I have a nice dividend yield, I will tend to gravitate toward at least some stock. I may have to, I may not be able to afford all of the position I want initially, but maybe I buy 100 shares of the stock and three contract, three long-term long contracts on it as well. Okay, because I want that dividend yield, but I may enhance it with the options. If I get the move I expect, I will close those option positions, wait for the stock to pull back, and now I have money to buy more shares, right? Does that make sense? All of this comes down to this whole idea, guys, is what is the best way for me to exploit the current price action of the market? The, exploit the current price action of the stock. How can I do the best? What can I do to enhance this trade or protect the trade? Okay, now we talked about what if the trade wins after earnings? What if the trade loses after earnings? Well, let's say we get that earnings report and this thing just stinks up the place, crashes all the way down here. We have a great big ugly on that trade. All right, in that circumstance, all I have to do is I have to exercise my contract here, which gives me the right to sell my stock, my stock or my option position at that price. Okay, close the trade. Hopefully I've locked in profits. Okay, as the trade moves along, I always have locked in profits. Once we get through this first period here, if this will rest and pull back and then continue up, I will, for that, from that point on, always have locked in profits on the trade. Okay. Good question, Doug. Question is, um, do I sell only one month out? Normally, yes. But there are times in a, in a boring stock like this, I don't even have to go out a full month. If you have kind of a boring stock where the implied volatility is relatively low in the options, you can just insure it with, with a stock that's, or an option that's only got a couple weeks to expiration and it doesn't cost you very much. Okay, so it all depends on the stock itself. If it's a really high implied volatility stock, you'll often, and you're approaching earnings, that front month will often be the highest implied volatility. I usually want to get a little bit further away from that so I can reduce my extrinsic cost in the trade. Because remember, it's only there for one purpose only, and that's to provide me temporary insurance for the earnings event. Okay. All right. Now, let's talk about one other scenario. And this happens quite often. What if that earnings event occurs and the stock falls, but it comes nowhere near your stop out point in the trade? It stops, bounces around in here for a little while, okay? Finds its legs and starts back up. Okay, if that starts to occur, if this doesn't look like it's going to completely cavitate or fall apart, when it starts to settle in here and that volatility starts to drop out of that trade, I will actually close those put options, take my profit on that trade, okay, because the puts made me some money on the trade. I will hold those put profits. For that next opportunity, if this sets up a buy signal over here, I can literally add to the trade with those put profits. Does that make sense, guys? So it doesn't have to be the all or nothing trade, right? Oftentimes you get, particularly in these kind of boring stocks, 
when they get earnings reports, they get some fluctuation, but they don't normally fluctuate a ton. Okay. And even if they do, we're hedged in that trade, we're protected on that position, and we're pretty good in the overall trade. And these things can go on and on and on and on. You never know how far they can go. If you're in a position and you start to get nervous about it, what would be wrong on this trade? I have a thousand shares of this position. What would be wrong in this trade if I get nervous up here to close 75% of the position? Anything wrong with that? Or maybe 80%. I close 80% of the position, take my profits, I still have 200 shares, I sell out of the money calls to hedge the position and see what happens. Right? I have all kinds of ways that I can manage these trades and continue to bring profits into the position. Okay. Good question. Jeff, how do I handle it if a stock, if I sell calls, I've got these 41 and a, or 47 and a half calls on Mo. And it's theoretically possible, right, that Mo could just take off here like a rocket shot and go up through 47 and a half. Okay? What I do is I leave it alone. I literally, it's, it's the easiest thing in the world to do. Because if the stock goes through 47 and a half, the, about the worst thing that can happen is somebody buy, paid me to buy the stock at a higher price. You guys ever think about that? That's what a covered call is. Somebody actually paid me to buy the stock at a higher price. If they want to take it after the stock shoots up like this, how many trades have you seen that shoot up like that and never stop? So if they want to take it, take it. Call me out of the trade. I will wait for the next pullback and buy the stock back. Does that make sense? I don't worry about getting called away. Getting called away is one of the greatest things in the world to me. If they want to take the stock and pay me to take it at a higher price, it's all yours, baby. Take it. Okay, because I just made money both ways. Thank you very much. See what I mean, Jeff? Um, Phil, that is correct. I mean, I use my long-term profits to really help my overall um, return year over year, okay? Now, I use short-term gains in my little swing trading account. No, I shouldn't say little. It's a pretty sizable account anymore, but um, my returns in my swing trade account, and I just continue to try and enhance those profits with those quick trades because I love doing the quick trades. And one of the reasons I think this is a good fit, guys, at least it's a good fit for me. My nature is I have to be doing something. Okay? Probably a lot of you are kind of the same way. It's hard not to fiddle with stuff, right? If I can have a big portion of my money which is normally just in cash anyway, holding longer term positions. And if I can swing trade the rest of that money, it helps me avoid that fiddling around with my longer term trades. The shorter term trading keeps me active and keeps me moving. The long term trades are just something I have to check on every once in a while. And it's just a portion of my overall funds, okay? I'm not robbing Peter to pay Paul, okay? I'm just holding a portion of my capital, okay, in longer term holds. Is this making some sense, guys? And I'm telling you, 
I'm telling you, this kind of trading can change your life. Would you be a whole lot calmer in your trading when you're holding a position like that, you're up 1500 bucks already in this position, when the market is kind of crummy on a day like today, do you feel the pressure to trade? No, I've made money, right? I'm doing good. And that's exactly right, Barry. So many people are trying to trade, but they really don't have their heart into swing trading. Let me ask you guys, how many of you came to the idea of trading with the idea of chaining yourself to a computer all day long. Did anybody think that was the lifestyle of a trader? Yeah, most people don't come to trading with that idea. But isn't it funny, that's what usually ends up happening. We end up chaining ourselves to our machines, right? So what I would suggest is start slow with this. Don't jump into this hook, line, and sinker. Start slow. Allocate some funds. Say, okay, I have half of my account is always free in cash. And take a small portion of that, whatever you feel comfortable with, and start slow. That's the best way to do this. Well. You can paper trade this, John, or I, I mean, you can paper trade this B12, but the problem with paper trading long-term holds, <laughs> I mean, wouldn't it be better to just buy one share <laughs> on a long-term position than trying to paper trade it? Because you're going to get bored to death with a paper trade. You won't stick with it. Okay. So just go in and find, just allocate some funds. Hey, I'm going to take five grand or I'm going to take 10 grand or whatever it is and say, okay, with that five grand, I'm going to see over the course of time, not today, over the course of time, I'm going to see if I can find five positions that I can buy up a position in that's longer term and work to manage that trade. Okay, just take some of your capital. Okay, don't take all of it. Just get started slow. Work into this. It may take you to find five good weekly positions. You may only find one a month. Slowly work into that process. Okay, and as you do this for a while, guys, you're going to find your confidence grows in this. Okay, we've got all this capital setting aside. Why don't we put it in something that at least give us some dividends? Okay, at least give us some way we can manage a position. In my long term portfolio, it it varies quite a bit depending on the confidence that I have in the overall condition of the market. But um, I usually start out with about a 5% allocation of my capital, and then I kind of adjust from there. Okay? I start adjusting how it's, how it's performing, what I need to do with it. It's, it's just like what, a mar what any kind of a financial advisor is going to do with you. They're going to set you down and they're going to say, okay, um, we have a list of things that you, we think you should be involved in. Is there anything that you want? Yeah, I'd like to have gold and I'd like to have, okay, so we'll put that in here. And then we start working through, okay, well, let's, I think, I think gold should be 10% allocation right now because the market's shaky or something like that. Right now, gold wouldn't be the place to have a 10% allocation. Um, and um, you just start working down through that allocation until you kind of balance that out. And then what I recommend is when you're doing this, about every quarter, 
you're going to have stocks just like this. Does it make sense right now, guys, to have positions that we've done nothing with that are up 78% less than a year? Shouldn't we be selling some of that off? Capturing some of that gain and maybe diversifying into something else? Reducing our risk on that position? Yeah, rebalance. Or maybe I just want to sell some of this off and since gold is sold off, maybe I want to take what I've made here, some of what I made here, and roll it into gold and see if gold can start to come up. Okay, so it's really pretty simple. Uh, yeah, ch pictures are changing, see? Um, so if it's not changing for you, refresh your screen. Okay, now notice over here in this, I've been mentioning individual stocks. In my long-term portfolio, I hold a lot of these trades. Not all of them, but I hold a lot of these trades. Do I have to be completely invested into just one stock that has earnings and volatility and all those kind of things to deal with? Or can I buy up an ETF in an entire sector and own just XLK? Yeah, XLE, 25% gain. And we get dividends on those, right? Yeah, you can buy an ETF to reduce that volatility even more. Pick a sector. Okay, take a look at that chart. Let's take a look at XLK. And once again, I'm gonna go over here to this chart. I'm gonna remove price. Remove all of my lines. Go to a weekly chart and let's look at XLK. Could you guys have made money with XLK? Now, when we look at XLK, XLK is made up of 75 companies. We own Hewlett Packard, PayX, Oracle, ADSK, Juniper, AKAM, IBM, okay? We own a piece of all of these companies. And look at the return that we could make by just holding that. Does that make sense, guys? You don't have to buy the individual company if you don't want to have to deal with earnings reports. Buy component ETFs or sector ETFs. Okay? Take a look at XLE. Do you guys see any entry signals here into XLE that would have been pretty easy to enter into? And XLE pays dividends. And we can sell calls against it. And we can buy long-term options on it. So we can do everything with this that we can on an individual stock. And not suffer the high volatility or have to deal with earnings reports. Does that make sense, guys? And I'm telling you. It'll blow you away what's possible. It will absolutely blow you away with what's possible. How many of you guys right now are holding Oracle? Rick came over to Right Way Options and said, thanks, Doug, for the Oracle trade. Let's take a look at Oracle. Here's a weekly chart. And let's take a look at the price action on Oracle. Okay, 
Rightway Options bought a position on Oracle on this candle. We had to sit through this pullback. Okay. But look what that's done now. Dick, how much are you up in your Oracle position? I don't know if you bought it as a stock or an option, but you've got nice money in the trade, right? It's very, very easy to find good quality entries on longer term charts. They're so much easier to read. You don't have to deal with the daily fluctuations. And we can make really good money just holding positions for a period of time. Again, start small. Sold the 68 calls against it. Awesome. <laughs> Just sold the 68 calls against it. Awesome, Dick. <laughs> well done. When to avoid entries. Well, it's always going to be the same for me on entries if, if I have a stock that's at a significant resistance point. If the stock has already rallied, I want to buy stocks that are in a trend that pull back and hold a higher low or consolidate over, okay? So I wanna buy into an existing trend, okay? And I wanna buy at the low point of that pullback or if it's a consolidation pattern in that trend, I want to buy that when it consolidates over toward that trend and shows me those buyers stepping in. Okay, those are going to be my two positions that I trade. You guys know I trade those same positions on daily charts. My swing trade trades are those same two patterns almost all the time. Okay, so I'm just going to be moving with the trend, looking for that relatively low risk entry into the trade. What I want to avoid doing is letting that stock move up significantly like here. This would be a bad buy point, don't you think? Because if I buy it here, my stop loss needs to be down here. I'm taking quite a little bit of risk on that trade. I don't want to do that. Okay. YTY, I don't know what you're asking. Do I ever buy a stock and sell a call option right away? Usually no, JB. And the reason is, is even if it's a short-term trade, because I'm following this pattern, the best way to exploit the price action of this chart, okay, is to buy when we're reacting to trend and support, to buy that trade here. If I sell calls against that position right here, is that the best way to exploit the price action of the chart? Wouldn't it be better to let that move up and then sell calls out of the money? I get a better price for the calls that I say, sell. And if the stock continues to race up and I get called away up here, I make more money on the trade. A common mistake of people who sell calls against trades is they sell them way too soon. They trap themselves into a trade that they don't like. Then they panic. They end up buying the calls back at a higher price, and they actually increase the overall cost of their trade. Uh, no. Balance of power really doesn't help me out at all for longer-term positions. Uh, Jay Clark, it's not so much about the delta. It's always an out of the money. Okay, because if I've done my entry correct, I've already got a profit in the trade. Okay, let's just use my Mo position. So Mo has moved up several days in a row, and I've sold an out of money call on that. 
okay? I've already got $1,500 in profits on this. All right, now in this position, if I had earnings tomorrow on this trade, I'm going to try and buy a put option that at least locks in some of my profits. It's going to be an out of the money, okay? I'm just putting in a stop loss, okay? Where do I wanna get out if it fails? So it's not often about what the delta is, it's where I wanna lock in my stop, okay? Where I wanna lock in the trade. Does that make sense? Yep, it's out of the money. It's it's a stop loss. Look at look at puts. If you buy a put against a long position, it's the perfect stop loss. If you own a put, can a stock gap through your stop loss and and cost you a whole bunch more money? No. The put guarantees this is the price I can sell for. Okay, Chris, again, I just, I just said, it's not about the delta. It's where I wanna lock in my stop loss. So it's the price. If this is, let's say the current price is $50 and I have an opportunity to buy a 45 strike put and that still gives me three points of potential profit in the trade if everything falls apart, okay? It's going to be based on where I want to lock off the risk of that trade. Okay. Stop loss is going to be placed just like any other place. Okay. Any other entry. Entered this trade in Oracle, stop loss goes right underneath this price action. Until this higher low is made, that stop loss stays in place until we start to move up. Then we move the stop loss up to here. This is no different than swing trading, guys. Just longer term time frames. We're gonna manage the price action of the chart. Okay? Yeah, I understand, D. I understand. It all depends on, Harry, um, is it a weekly or monthly? It, it Most of the time it's going to be a monthly, okay? And the reason I say that is because if there's a news event coming, those shorter term options closer to that event are going to have escalated in price on the extrinsic value because of that news event, right? The extrinsic value that I'm going to hit in those trades are going to be higher. Okay. And what happens as soon as the event occurs? We get a volatility crush, right? IV drops. That's right. So I want to avoid, normally I want to avoid those very short term options because I don't want to suffer the big volatility crush. There's always going to be some volatility crush, but I usually want to be away from that event enough that I'm not suffering a huge IV hit. That way, the next morning, the event's over, I go in, close the trade, I'm out. In fact, morning earnings are great, okay? Because you buy the put the, the afternoon before, buy the put to protect the trade. The next morning, the event occurs, and you make your decision, do I close the put, take my loss, whatever, first thing in the morning, close it out, all is done, you protected yourself, it cost you a little bit of insurance premium, and that's all it was. Uh, once again, guys, don't get hung up on the delta. Okay, don't get hung up on the delta. Where do you want to set your stop loss? We have an event that's going to create some volatility when I'm setting the protection, right? I have an event. Otherwise, I'm just gonna have a stop loss. 
I'll have a stop loss. On this entry right here, my stop loss was here. I didn't move up my stop loss on this until we responded higher with a higher low. Then I moved my stop loss. Okay, but if this was an earnings event, I'm only insuring around that earnings event. So if I had this trade on and earnings are tomorrow, I'm gonna to try to find an option in here that locks in some profits, okay? Some place where I can lock in some profits in the trade, even if this just cavitates tomorrow, okay? I've locked in a guaranteed profit if I exercise that contract, okay? So it's more about where I wanna protect the trade not the specific delta. Okay. Now, we've spent quite a bit of time here. You guys have been great, an hour and a half. But I just want to, I want to tell you guys that I teach this stuff every single day. Would you guys in RWO say that this kind of stuff I teach over and over and over? How to do this? And if you guys are in the room and have a position and have a question... Would everyone in here agree that if someone has a question on a position, I'm happy to lay it out and see if I can help with that trade? Okay. So if you guys want to learn this stuff and learn how to do some of these longer term trades, give RWO a shot. Okay. I can show you how to do this stuff over and over and over, and you can follow along with these positions that I take. Oh yeah, why not, Mel? If you're a member to RWO, and you say, Doug, I'm in this longer term position, I'm nervous about this trade, what can I do to protect myself? I'm going to look at that trade. If you're willing to share it with me, I'm going to look at that trade and see if there's anything that I would recommend in there on how to protect that position. I might give you several ideas and say, now you decide how you want to handle this. Okay. But I'm always willing to do that because I think we all learn better from our experience, right? If we're actually in the trade, if we've got skin in the game, Okay. JJ, um, really the only major difference, I think, between hit run candlesticks and right way options is Rick is totally focused on directional long calls and puts and, and nothing else. Rick will tell you, comes to spreads, any other option strategies, don't talk to him about them because he doesn't trade them. And we'll tell you that. If you want to learn covered calls, credit spreads, any of those kind of things, we, we don't throw out any strategy. We'll look at any strategy. And I trade lots of different, well, multiple different strategies depending on how the market is setting up. Okay, so right now I'm in long-term positions. I'm in short calls. Every single one of my positions are hedged. I have a QQQ credit spread hedging my overall account. Okay, today we put on a debit spread. You know, we'll put on anything that fits the application for that trade. Okay, and I want to teach you how to utilize that because if you can look at the market the way I see it, and that is with all of these different ways that we can exploit the price action of the chart, there's always something to be done, okay? Um, Stan, if you're a member of the room, we had an open house the last couple of days. It was free to just come in. Um, if you're, uh, now it's gonna require you to be a member. Let me see if I've got, second. It's going to require you to be a member of Hit and Run Candlesticks or Right Way Options. And if you're a member of Right Way Options, it's really pretty simple. You just log into the Right Way Options page. 
log into the website, come over to the Right Way Options page, and come right here into the Right Way Options room. Okay. On a 30 day trial, then that's all you got to do. Right Way Options, come into the Right Way Options room. I don't. Um, see, I think about it. I do two hours of training every day. And if I recorded all of that and tried to render all of that and store all of that, nobody's going to watch it anyway. <laughs> it's just, who's going to watch two hours of class every day? Um, so I don't. But what I would recommend you do, if you're a member, you can use software like Flashback Express. It's free. You download it. You log into your room, okay, and you set the recorder to record. Record this screen at this time for these times, and then you always have it. You can, you can do that anytime you want. Okay, and I have a lot of people that have to leave or can't be there for part of the day, and they record it for themselves. Okay, and then you can deal with the data and decide how you want to to deal with it. Honestly, if I recorded two hours every day, I wouldn't get anything else done. You guys don't want me to do that. And we'd have to raise the price on everything because all I would be doing is recording, rendering, and uploading massive storage amounts because videos require massive storage. Okay. So I would recommend just get Flashback Express. It's free. Set it up and record yourself. And then you always have it. You have instant access to it. You don't have to wait for me. That might be several days before I can even get it rendered and uploaded. You know, for example, guys, I get up at 5 o'clock this morning. It's in my, in my time, it's 844. And you want me to then be rendering and trying to upload videos and labeling them. Honestly, there wouldn't be enough time in the day. Okay. Do you recommend one on meetings? Uh, JJ, I'm not sure what you're asking there. What time do I usually sleep? Um, I usually try to get in bed by 9 o'clock because I have to be up at 5 a.m. to start over and do the morning blog and the morning market prep video. And On the website offers for membership, um, you know, that really comes down to you know, uh, what you can afford. I mean, certainly uh, they're all this. I mean, a member is a member. It doesn't matter if you're a monthly member or an annual member. If you can afford to be an annual member all at once, it's cheaper. Okay. So, it, uh, you know, it really, really doesn't matter. Oh, yeah, the um, RWO session is, um, Ludberry said, 10 a.m. to 12 Central Time, uh, which is um, 11, 11 a.m. Eastern Time to 1 p.m. Eastern Time at a minimum every day. And then, of course, I cover the open. As soon as the market opens, I'm there. I'm usually there for a half hour, 45 minutes. Today, I didn't stop, really. I went straight through from 8.30 all the way through 1 p.m. Eastern time, and then I came back on, um, I come back on for the close of the day. Hey, awesome, TD. And take it slow, okay? Remember, long-term trading takes a little bit of time to adapt yourself to. Take it slow. But I gotta tell you guys, there's great money in it, and it's worth doing. And it's easy to manage, and that's the cool thing. 
It's easy to manage. Yeah, I do. I normally do two of the Tuesday night sessions a month. And then I do two Saturday sessions a month. So this Saturday is a Right Way Options e-learning Saturday. I, I do a lot of content, guys. My YouTube channel now has, a, a, it's like 1,050 videos on YouTube. And there's thousands and thousands of hours that are loaded up to the website. Okay. This class won't be uploaded um, to YouTube. This will be saved, I think, in the in the because this is kind of a members e-learning. Well, at least I think that's the intention. We'll we'll see um, whether or not um, I put that out to public. Okay. Chris, you're very welcome, and I hope you get some useful usefulness out of this. I'm telling you that when I finally learned to do longer term trades, it made a massive difference in my comfort level in the market because I always have an account with, with profits in it. I literally always have an account with unrealized gains in. When the market's choppy or volatile, it really doesn't bother me that much because I have these big profits over here that I could take at any time. Okay. And it's something you have to work into, but I highly recommend it. And if you work full time, or even if you just work part time and can't be around the market every day, and I find a lot of people that I work with in individual coaching, they never really, they don't have the temperament to be a short term swing trader. They really want to be that trader where I can set it. I can spend a couple, three hours a week doing this. And then other than that, I'm off doing what I want to do. If that's you guys, look into longer term trading. Okay. Hike and Ashy, um, if you like Hike and Ashy, and some people do, some people don't. But if you like Hike and Ashy, think about it. If if you're doing, I wish you could get do a two and a half day chart on Hike and Ashy because a two and a half day chart would be equal to a weekly chart of standard candlesticks. But just take a Hike and Ashy two or three day chart. Go to Hike and Ashy, okay? Go a three day chart and trade it the same way. The patterns are the same, okay? Look at um, XLK. Can you make money with that chart? I, I mean, oh my gosh, right? It's easy to do, so just pick a time frame. If you if you prefer two day, use a two day. Oh my gosh. Imagine this, this entry right here on a two day. So just pick your time frame, guys, and trade it. Just pick your time frame and trade it. It really isn't that hard. And I tell you, once you start getting onto this, you'll go, why did I ever mess around? I feel so much more comfortable with just these trades because they're easier to read, they're easier to enter. And I have a life again. I don't have to chain myself to a computer all the time. All right. And even if you just do part of your portfolio, it relieves that pressure. If you have great profits in a long-term portfolio when the market's crummy, it relieves the pressure. All right. I had some things stop out, Mel, in that big sell-off. I had some things stop out. But yes, it did very well because when it was over, I started buying just like we did here. Okay?
Pullbacks in the market, I welcome them. If you're a longer term trader, pullbacks in the market are awesome. Market crashes are even more awesome because when they're over, you get to buy great stock at cheap prices. Does that make sense, Mel? Never fear a sell-off. In fact, welcome the sell-off because that provides better trades. Short-term traders live in fear of the sell-off. Long-term traders look at that as an opportunity. Like Warren Buffett said, he's a buyer whenever, when the fear level reaches the, the highest limit, he's the buyer. Okay? When the sell-off is over, I'm buying. When the sell-off is going on, I'm usually hedged and I'm trying to control the risk to the downside. Long-term trades start stopping out. I'm taking profits and I'm working to move with the direction of the market down until that's over. Yeah, it absolutely works with stocks longer term and looks works with ETFs at longer term. I do. Um, it's it's actually not a fixed number. It, it changes all the time, you know, depending on the decisions I make. But I always leave cash at hand. And the reason I always want to have cash at hand is so that I have the ability. I have the ability to sell some calls, right? If you if you don't have cash at hand, you don't have any margin available to sell calls, right? So I always keep cash at hand. I'm never I'm never 100%, or really almost never 100% in. I always have cash available so I can make adjustments. Um, it depends. It depends on your confidence in the market. In 2017, when the market was just in this beautiful upside trend, and it was very steady, it was very controlled, it was probably one of the times that I can remember in recent memory where I was almost 100% invested. When the market's like this, I'm gonna hold more cash because of the volatility, the potential that we've gone up so, so far that we could have a crash at any time. I'm not saying or trying to predict that, but we could have a crash at any time, so I'm gonna hold more cash. I'm gonna be a little bit more careful. Okay? Lots of volatility in the market. So I just try to adapt myself to the market potential. Where's your comfort level? Okay. Oh, it works great. Well, all you have to do, Glamour Girl, is all you have to do is look for stocks that have been beaten down. I showed you a couple. Mo, right? Let's go back to a, a weekly here on regular candles. Mo, been incredibly beaten down. So look for your entry into the trade. Okay, take a look at KHC. KHC, anybody like this bottom pattern that's formed here? KHC breaking through that resistance, a rest or hold over here, wouldn't that set up a nice opportunity? Nice dividend pair. Look for those stocks that have been beaten down. Yes, and ETFs, ETFs that have been beaten down. Okay, those stocks turning around and coming back up where he can get that longer term position in them. And it doesn't matter if it's a weekly or three day or whatever it is that you like to trade, just find your time frame and trade them. Absolutely. Okay. Just like um, XLE. XLE is now just breaking this long term downtrend. Okay. Break that long term downtrend, prove to hold it as support. Show me buyers. How about XLF? 
XLF breaking up through a resistance high. Kind of stretched out right here. Let it rest and pull back, find support. Look for your entry into the trade. Okay. F cell. F cell, in my opinion, is extremely extended at this point, and we're dealing with a price resistance here in this longer term. You can see I've marked it up. And so far we've reacted negatively to that resistance. I think it's overextended in the short term. Okay, so just wait for the next entry. I mean, when you look at this chart, wouldn't you say we're struggling with resistance in that chart? So require it, require it to pop through, hold, and then look for a buy. And then you're golden. Okay. Jets. Jets is probably short term overextended. Notice that that's just been pushing up crazy and we're about ready to run into a massive resistance in that chart. Does that look like a long term buy place? Yeah, nope. XLU, XLU is trending down. So XLU at this point needs to break that downtrend. Break the downtrend, hold the support. Now it's a buy. Just like it was right over in here. There you have a buy. You don't have a buy here. We tried to get into this trade in our RWO. We tried to get in over here someplace and we got stopped out. It didn't work. So wait for the next entry into the trade. Okay. And guys, I'm not going to sit here and go through a whole bunch of stocks. Um, I'll look at a couple more here. ARKF, does that look like a long-term buy? I mean, honestly, guys, all you got to do is look at the charts. It was a long-term buy in one of these pullback points, okay, over here. Stupid thing changed tools on me. It might have been a long-term buy here or a long-term buy here. Do we have a long-term buy pattern here? No, there's no long-term buy pattern here yet. Wait for the trade. And honestly, guys, anybody can look at that and see that. If you struggle with the technical analysis and you look at this and say, hey, just because I love this stock, this has to be a buy. Think about the common sense in that. That's not gonna work for you. Okay. Does CDEV look like a buy signal or a buy point in the trade? If you're looking long term, no way, it's at price resistance. Buy the stock when it's at price support, not at price resistance. It's too extended. What was the rule I said? Up five to seven periods in a row. That's not a buy point. That's a time to hedge it. Right? Just because you may love this chart or happen to see this as just a great opportunity, that is not a great long-term opportunity here. Not until this either gets a significant consolidation, breaks out and makes a significant pullback to rest, Okay, is this going to turn into a long-term trade again? If you own the trade, absolutely, I would be selling calls against it. If you want to hold it long-term, I would be selling calls against it. Yes. But now is not a buy point for a long-term trade. It needs a rest. It needs a pullback. It's overextended. 
Okay. Give me NT. Maybe. There's not much not much to go on here. Um, this is a new issue stock. Um, look at these price action moves in here. Okay. Um, this candle right here covered 51%. Does that look like, I mean, honestly, guys, you're taking a huge risk in that. 51%. You tell me, is anyone, if you buy this candle right here, is anyone on a long-term trade willing to pull that down here and take a 22.5% risk to your stop loss? And that's if you buy the stock. If you buy the option, 50-60%. Okay. No, not for me. Yeah, no, this is a bearish engulfing candle. Now, that doesn't mean anything because it's not followed through. If this rests out here, several periods go sideways like this, then it might tighten up the stop enough to make it worthwhile. Do something like this and pop right here. I can set an alert and get into that trade. But where it's at right now, no, I wouldn't be interested in it. Just because you go longer term, guys, doesn't doesn't you can't throw out common sense in the price pattern of the chart. GLD. Does GLD look like a buy now? Yeah, I, I'm with you. I mean, no. There's no upward trend. We haven't even turned the corner to try to come up, okay? Make it turn the corner. Make it show you something bullish. We made a lower high and a lower low. That's a downtrend. No, it's not a buy. Okay? Show me something. I mean, all you got to do is show me something. Push back up. Hold a higher low. Okay, start showing me an uptrend. Now I've got to buy. Just like over here, guys. Break the downtrend. Hold a higher low. Notice how this over here, look at the concise price action here. Look at the volatility of these price bars compared to these. There's no way this looks like a buy. Okay. Total speculation in that trade. Don't trade like that, guys. And if you want to learn how to stop doing that, become a member of RWO or HRC, and we'll teach you how not to do that. How to wait for a proper trade and stop speculating. It doesn't make any difference if it's long-term or short-term, guys. You cannot continue to speculate and try to predict when the turn is going to come. Make the turn occur. Make the chart prove to you it's bullish. The charts that I showed you, did any of them look like these? Take a look at 3M. That is not even quite a buy signal yet. And that looks way better than most of those charts that we just looked at. KHC. That is getting closer to a buy signal than any of the charts we just looked at.
How do you get, if you're asking Red, how do you get into the Right Way Options room? Become a member of Right Way Options. If you're asking about this class, how will you get it? We'll post it to the members pages. So you'll be able to um, look at it because this is a public open meeting. Um, you'll be able to view it as a member of HRC. Yeah, it'll be posted on your members page. Yep, as a member. Okay. Yeah, um, on a weekly, KHC is setting up in that weekly RBB type pattern. It's actually set up over here. Yep. Nice bottoming pattern. Thanks, guys. Thank you so much. Um, hope to see you around the room. You guys take care. Be safe. Hope you got something out of this, honestly. And if you guys have questions about this, and it's understandable that you would. This is a whole new idea. It's understandable that you would ask. Ask, and I'm here to help. Rick is here to help. All right? We want to help you turn your trading around and get profitable. If you want to make the kind of returns that I showed you at the beginning of this movie, um, class, you can do it here. All right. Take care, guys. Have a great evening. I'm going to go get some sleep because I got to be right back at my desk here in just a few hours. Have a good one, everyone. Thanks a bunch.